Hello and welcome back. So today I want to talk to you about the singular value decomposition for compact operators. So in the past on this channel, we've already talked about singular value decomposition for matrices, which allows you to get a sort of eigen-like decomposition for non-square matrices. And we saw how that can be effectively used for things like data compression or producing a pseudo-inverse. And this happens through a truncated singular value decomposition, where we use only the largest features in order to describe the original matrix. This can be used for image compression, and we saw that it can actually clean up noise in CT scans. But today I want to talk to you about something a little bit more general and I would like to talk to you about a singular value decomposition for compact operators. This is effectively working with infinite dimensional matrices and it turns out that in the compact operator setting it isn't actually all that more difficult than a regular single value decomposition. And we have already introduced compact operators in a previous lecture a few months ago. And I want to use this in order to talk about convergence theories for dynamic mode decompositions. So why don't we go ahead and get started? We're gonna have two Hilbert spaces, say H and H tilde. And we're gonna take a look at a compact operator that maps the two Hilbert spaces together. This means that this operator, this compact operator, can be approximated in the norm topology by finite rank operators. Now, since we have deferring domains and ranges, we can't really just use a spectral theorem because we're not mapping to the same space. So there's no real hope of, say, getting eigenvalues and eigenfunctions, but the SVD gives you the next best thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make an operator that maps to the same space out of this one. If I take a look at V star V, that first V on the right is going to map us from H to H tilde, and then V star maps us from H tilde to H. And so then V star V also happens to be self-adjoint, because if you take the adjoint of V adjoint times V, then you just exchange the order, and then V adjoint adjointed is just V again. So that shows us that this is actually a self-adjoint operator, but it's also a compact operator. Take the inner compact operator, and then just show that you can get a finite rank approximation of that. V star against that finite rank approximation is actually a finite rank operator itself. So then you can show that you can get a finite rank approximation of this in the norm topology. So that means it is actually compact. That means we have a self-adjoint compact operator. This maps from H to H, so we can now talk about eigenfunctions. So now we know that the spectral theorem for self-adjoint compact operators actually applies. There we go, we have a spectrum and we have an orthonormal basis for H that is an eigenbasis for V star V. So now we'd like to turn this into an SVD we are gonna leverage this eigenbasis that we made for the domain. So let's take a look at a whole bunch of functions in H tilde, and let's define them all to be, say, fi is equal to v times gi. So if I take the product between fi and fj in H tilde, well, this can be rewritten as vgi and vgj in H tilde. Then we can go ahead and remove v and put it onto the other side using the adjoint relation. So now we get gi product with v star v against gj. This inner product now is in H. What ends up happening is that gj is an eigenfunction for v star v. So that means that we get some lambda j coming out of that, and now we can go ahead and pull that out of our inner product. And so what you're left with is lambda j times the inner product between gi and gj. Well, that means that this is either gonna be one if i is equal to j, or it's gonna be zero if i is not equal to j. And so then we see that if i is not equal to j, f i and f j, their inner product is zero. So they're orthogonal. And if i is equal to j, then we end up having that their norm is equal to lambda j. So what we need to do now is we need to normalize these fi's. So we're gonna go ahead and replace them with v times gi divided by the square root of lambda i. And so this doesn't necessarily give you an orthonormal basis in the range. What it gives you is an orthonormal set. So now how does this get us the singular value decomposition? The singular value decomposition of an operator is a sum of rank one tensors. So basically I'm saying that if V is applied to some H, what we're gonna have is that our operator V is gonna basically look at the expansion of our function H in terms of GI. You apply this operator to this decomposition, and so then you see that V acting on little h is equal to the sum of the inner product between H and GI inside of H. And so now what is V times GI? Well, that is just our f sub i times the square root of lambda i. And well, there you go. That is the singular value decomposition for compact operators. And it shows us that all compact operators are really just sums of rank one tensors. 
And even though we can't have a proper spectrum, we can still have singular values. And this shows us exactly how they manifest. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And I have more content coming that will expand on compact operators, their applications to differential equations, term level problems, and also a convergence theory for dynamic mode decomposition, which is something that nobody else has really done yet. And if you like, I have this nice video here on delta functions, and also uh, this one here for dynamic mode decomposition, if you haven't seen that yet.